you could take only one rifle to Africa, the 375 is where it's at. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm back with Guy Miner. Thank you for joining us, Guy. You bet, Gavin. Why not? I like it here. Guy is really, really excited. We're talking about like a kid before Christmas because <laughs> you're going to Africa in July. I am. I'm <laughs> going to Africa after all these years. I've uh, been planning the trip for mm -hmm. many, many years and one reason or another never made it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going. Going to South Africa for Plains Game. Mm -hmm. Probably not going to hunt a lot of animals, four, five, six maybe. Um, that sounds like a lot to me. <laughs> I know. It sounds like a lot to me too. And that's one of the amazing things about these African trips is for roughly the price of a guided elk hunt here in the USA, you can go to Africa and take four or five animals Wow! for a very similar cost. Okay, you're selling me on the idea. Maybe I'll have to consider that some future year. Uh, next year. I think that would be great. So you decided to take two rifles. We've already talked about the 30-06, the load that you had prepared. Right. We did a muzzle threading job and a thread protector so that you can use a suppressor over there, which they're going to provide for you. Yes, yes. And then you've got the 375 H&H. Let's talk about why you chose the 375 to accompany the 30 6 and, and you can do a one rifle safari very mm -hmm. nicely. And the 30 6 would handle everything I plan on hunting over there. Mm -hmm. But I've got this 375. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually bought it about 12 years ago, mm -hmm. planning to take it to Africa. Okay. Um, fell in love with the doggone rifle, and as this trip got closer and closer, I couldn't bring myself to leave it home. It had to go to Africa. That's right. why I own it. But what if you had an issue with the 30 out 6? What right. if your extractor broke, or what, whatever happened? The scope, you know, took a dive. Sure. Now you've got a completely separate rifle you know, sitting there ready to go. I think that's pretty smart, actually. Exactly. A, a second rifle, and there's going to be a third scope because mm -hmm. I'm taking another scope in addition to this scope just in case. Mm -hmm. um, already in the rings and sighted in and all that good stuff. Gotcha. So, 375 is a, a wonderful, from what I've been told, I've never been to Africa before, what do <laughs> I know? But everything that I have read and been told, the 375 H&H is widely regarded as a wonderful general purpose hunting rifle over there, hunting mm -hmm. rifle cartridge. Mm -hmm. um, the choice of the Ruger number one is uh, debatable. Mm -hmm. because you're hunting large and you may be hunting some kind of dangerous game. I don't plan on it, but they're over there. Mm -hmm. um, and a single shot rifle is probably not the best solution for that. But you've got guides there that there's, have got your back, yep, right? There's going to be other folks there in, in the hunting party and yep. there's, a, there's a professional hunter there. Um, and by the way, he loves both the uh, 375 and the 30 out 6 Oh, perfect. So he's happy with both those choices. Nice. Things that I really like about 375 H&H, &H, this is what I've learned hunting with it here in the U.S. and doing lots of target practice with it as well. I've taken three bear with it. Um, and I like the fact that it is fast enough that it's got a velocity very similar to that of a 308 Winchester or a 30 mm -hmm. In fact, the bullet has almost identical BC to a 165 grain nozzler ballistic tip or something along those lines. Very similar and very similar muzzle velocity, about 2,700 feet per second. So it flies nice and flat out there, 300 mm -hmm. yard shots. And uh, my pH isn't real big on people taking shots past 300 anyway. So and that's your, your guide, your pH? Yep. PH, professional hunter, yeah. Gotcha. I'm learning all this African lingo stuff. Yes, I'm, I'm still taking it in myself. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a similar trajectory to the 30 out 6, then I assume, at least for your elevation, that means your hold would be similar, and that's that's a nice thing. You like these loop hold scopes. I do. They're right? they're lightweight. They're simple. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of guys have had some issues with loop holds in the recent years, but I haven't had any problem. It's been over 20 years since I had a problem with a, with a mm -hmm. loop hold. Yeah, I, I know our Mark V certainly has held up really well and is just kind of an all-around favorite for PRS-style shooting, for sure. Okay, so let's talk about the, the number one a little bit. Yeah, um, some interesting story behind the number one, but but uh, this one is uh, single shot, falling block action. They're all that way. This one has a 24-inch barrel. It's called their tropical model, hmm. uh, which is pretty funny when I'm carrying it around in the snow <laughs> hunting elk with it, but whatever. Right. Um, that works, too. <laughs> And, and it's, it's a very strong design. Mm -hmm. They have been chambered in cartridges, I believe, as big as a 470 Nitro Express. Whoa. Yeah. Um, maybe somebody did something bigger than that. But wow. I think they've been, I think that might be the top one. I know 458 Winchester Magnum and uh, 
Oh, the, the big lot, the 458 lot. Wow. Um, yeah, so they've been chambered for some real shoulder busters. So obviously it's a stout action then. It is, it is. It can take pretty much uh, any kind of high level pressure. Mm -hmm. You don't have to load down for the number one, not nice. at all. Uh, <laughs> this one I found uh, here in Wenatchee, uh, used. Uh, I was on consignment. Uh -huh. And I walked in the gun store and I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and I said, well, I'm a mule deer hunter. What do I need a 375 H and H for? But it just kept calling me and I finally went in and made an offer and the fellow who owned it came and talked to me mm -hmm. and um, he accepted my offer and he told me an interesting bit of history about this. Um, you all may have heard of a gun writer named John Barsness. This was his rifle. Well, that's awesome. And I got a hold of John, and he told me a little bit more about the rifle. I'd already read several articles of his mm -hmm. where he was talking about 375 H and H, and this is the rifle he worked up many of those loads in. And he's taken it to Africa at least once, I think twice, on on safari. Oh wow! So it's already been there. The rifle knows what to it's do. It's been there, and with the <laughs> same professional hunter. Really? So at least okay. one of his trips, yeah. Yeah, I've read a lot of John's articles in, for instance, Handloader Magazine. Right. Yeah. Right. And I've got his uh, book here on our little display at uh, nice. the bottom one there. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's got an article in there on the 375. So Very cool. That was the easiest load workup I ever did in my life, too, by the way. Buy the guy's rifle and then read his article about loading for that rifle. <laughs> Isn't that perfect? Bingo. When does that happen? That, that was right. like once in a lifetime. So that was, that was fantastic. Uh, and sorry, John, I'm not using your nice Reloader 15 low charge because I couldn't get enough Reloader 15. I had to make a change. Yep. Very awesome. So 24 inch barrel, one in 12 twist. Yep. A little slower than what I'm used to, but plenty good for the bullets uh, that you're using, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, supposedly it stabilizes a 350 grain bullet just fine. Okay. And uh, these are only 260s. Oh, nice. So, okay. yeah. And you've got a one and a half to five, three and a half to 10 loophole. And what yes. does that mean exactly? I have two different scopes that oh, I'm going to okay. be taking. And so this is a one and a half to five, which okay. uh, I have on here a lot. Uh, mostly I use this rifle for bear hunting. Uh, I have taken one bear out at over 300 yards with it. Mm -hmm. The closest bear was at 15 feet. Um, that was a hairy situation, so to speak. <laughs> um, following up a wounded bear, wow. uh, another hunter had wounded it. And uh, okay. I, I, I elected myself to go into the brush after the bear. Um, and That's why I, I like to hunt with a 44 Magnum on my side because if something happens that close, yes, a little bit more instinctual for me, you know. Yes, but we, be prepared nonetheless, right? Yeah, either way. Yeah. That was uh, that was interesting. <laughs> Very good. Okay, and then I don't know a whole lot about the 375 H and H, so let's cover some high level details there too. Sure, it's 110 years old now. Introduced in 1912, hmm. belted cartridge. This is this is the cartridge case that many of our later belted magnums were originally based on. Oh, okay. The 300 or 375 and, and the 300 H and H that came along later, hmm. um, which is just a neck down version of this. We're looking at over 4,000 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Wow. Which sounds like a lot. It's the minimum level, this 375 H&H &H and its counterpart, the 9.3 by 62, are basically considered the minimum level that is legal to hunt big and dangerous game with in Africa in many countries. Wow. Not all okay. countries, but this is a, a logical minimum. Gotcha. Can you get away with smaller cartridges? Yeah, but why? Is it a good no. idea? No. I, I don't. Not. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and and most of the the bullets uh, for this range from 235 grains up to 300. There are some 350s and there's some lighter bullets too. But most of them cluster in there. Mm -hmm. um, and those were it was originally designed for a uh, 235, a 270, and a 300 grain bullet. Those were the original mm -hmm. factory loads. Roughly double um, what you'd have with a 30 out six or a 308 in yes, terms of weight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and and roughly the same velocity, yeah. so it's uh, it's Twice got the energy. it's got yeah. a lot more punch than yeah. those two cartridges do. Um, yeah, it'd be fine. And general purpose big game, I'm going for African plains game, Gemsbuck, mm -hmm. Kudu, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's more than enough for all that stuff. Uh, if I ever go back for Cape Buffalo, mm -hmm. well, I'll use a heavier bullet. <laughs> 
Ah, that's nice. And then you mentioned that they can overpenetrate. Yes, so and that's you don't uh, want to kill two birds with one stone in terms of animals. No, you have to pay. Pack. You have to pay for every animal you shoot over there. Ah. Um, and also, I think it would be uh, very possible if you've got a herd of these animals together and they're milling around. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be very possible to shoot one and have the bullet penetrate on through to the next. It's, it's mm -hmm. happened before to other hunters. Mm -hmm. um, and that could, you know, maybe you don't kill that second animal, wound maybe you just wound it, and then yep. you've got a massive tracking job. Yep. So, no thanks. I'll, I'll wait my turn and, and shoot when I can take one. Yeah, that whole notion of knowing what's behind your target, fundamental rule of gun safety definitely applies Absolutely, there. it sure does. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the bullet. Yeah, I, uh, I got very addicted to this bullet early on. I took a look. Um, at some of the ballistic coefficients and all, and this mm -hmm. is a, you know, it doesn't sound high in today's world of long range shooting, but 0.473 on the G1, mm -hmm. I think that's right, very close to that at any rate. Um, 260 grain. Can I grab that? You bet. Wow. Yeah. And it's tipped <laughs> and it's got a boat tail. Yes, so. and, it's a, and it's a bonded bullet. Okay. Um, so the, the lead core and the jacket are actually bonded mm -hmm. together so that they don't separate, um, typically at any rate. Hmm. Um, yeah, nice, and I've seen some really good accuracy out of it, particularly with that Reloader 15 load that we'll talk about that I'm not using on this trip. And 1 in 12 required twist, and you've got... 1 in 12. 1 in 12. Yep, good to go. It's just fine. So the rest of the load, let's talk about that. Sure. Uh, I managed to buy a whole bunch of Remington Peters brass, brand new brass, several years ago, 250 of them, I think. Oh, wow, that's um, got to so be plenty. I'm, I'm set for life on 375 H&H <laughs> brass. Um, uh, the... The load that I have been using is 69 grains of Reloader 15, which is Nosler's recommended accuracy load for the 375 H&H. &H. I like that about their load data. Yes. If you look at Lo Nosler load data, even online, they have the little asterisk, little bracketed section there that is the most accurate powder for that particular load. That gives people a great starting point. It does, and I've shot some uh, pretty surprising groups, surprising to mm -hmm. me, with this rifle mm -hmm. and that load. Uh, that's also uh, a load that John Barston has recommended. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm out of RL15, <laughs> so uh, I had to make a switcheroo yep. and went with the H4350, which has worked very well for me in other cartridges and in the 375 before. Yeah, that's uh, in 2,700 foot, uh, foot per second and 4,200 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Yes. That is uh, pretty much colossal. So let's talk about some of the data. Now, you got some chronograph data and calculated this drop chart. Yes, uh, and my my load actually did uh, something mm -hmm. like 27, 2,706 feet per second. Mm -hmm. So I just rounded off to 2,700 for this. Yeah. And nice thing, very much like an OT6 or a 308, zero to 200 yards, you're mm -hmm. only two inches high at 100, you're about eight or nine inches low at 300. Perfect. Don't have to ever hold off hair. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at animals that have vital area about the size <laughs> of a basketball. <laughs> That's so crazy. If I can get that into that heart lung yep. area, um, yeah, um, I should be doing just fine. And you chronoed your load to get that data. This is pretty impressive. I was I was impressed. I, I, I know H4350 is really good stuff. And but when I got down to an extreme spread of 22 feet per second and an SD of only 10, mm -hmm. I thought with 4,000 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle, yeah. I was like, wow. That's, that's really good. That's impressive. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious. I think it'd be fun to build a bolt action precision mm. with a 24 mm -hmm. inch barrel or so and see how good that thing would do out there at 600 yards. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That sounds like a real good time. Okay, so let's do just a brief show and tell. This is one of the bears that you took. It is, it is. <laughs> that was a uh, that was a one shot drop at 306 yards mm -hmm. with this Nosler bullet. Very good. <laughs> um, and, and you know, 306 yards, that was as close as we could get. We ran out of cover. Mm -hmm. And so there he is and take the shot or, or you know, don't take the shot. And were you just saying if you zero at 200, you're only at eight or nine inches smaller exactly. or slow? That's exactly. Exactly. And, and the bear was the bear was feeding on some uh, berry bushes over in eastern mm -hmm. Washington. Okay. And yep. he stood up to to reach up and grab, and I watched him do that twice. <laughs> he was in kind of a habit, and uh, the third time he stood up and reached up and got some berry bushes. Um, it was like a bowling pin going over. <laughs> <laughs> could, he, could hear the thwack of that big oh, bullet yeah. hitting the hide. It's loud, isn't it? It is very loud, yeah. and, and he he basically just fell right then and there. And here's the recovered bullet. 
From a different bear, but yes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, gotcha. this this is the one that I followed into the brush and shot at about 15 feet when I could finally find him. <laughs> um, and then when we were skinning him out, we found that bullet hanging up in the offside hide. Okay. It yep. had penetrated through most of the bear. Wow. Um, and we just spent there. So it, Where did you hit him? Um, up front here somewhere and okay. pulled, pulled it out out the back the other side. So it was kind of whoosh, kind of diagonal. Yeah, it, yeah it took out it, took out pretty much everything important. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, very <laughs> impressive performance. You know, and it expands to almost three quarter inch diameter. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, and still weighed two hundred and eighteen grains. Yeah. When I recovered it. That so. is crazy. That is really really impressive performance. Mm. If it's going to do that kind of a job on a black bear, and black bear are pretty stout animals. You yeah, know. he was probably around a 300 pound bear roughly. Yeah, that's decent. Yeah. 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 That's real decent. So, and these animals that I'm going after in Africa are bigger. Mm -hmm. They're five, 600 pounds, most of them. Okay. Maybe, maybe a little bigger. Um, but I think the bolt's going to be very much up to the task. That's very good. Great load workup. Good job. Uh, one question for you is, how are you going to decide which rifle to use in each particular shooting application over there in South Africa? Most of the time, I'm going to go with a 30 6 because it's going to have a suppressor on it. Yes. And that's a lot. It's a, it kicks a lot less, and mm -hmm. it's uh, going to be a lot quieter. And the, the PH is the guy who asked me mm -hmm. about making sure that I got my muzzle threaded so I can, he could he can yep. put a can on it when we get there. Check out that video. We've got that separately. <laughs> he, he and his trackers are guiding many months out of the year, lots of rifle blasts around them. Mm -hmm. And if they can hunt with a suppressor, that's mm -hmm. the way to go. Yeah. But I couldn't leave this at home. So no. it's, well, it's going to go out and do something. Okay. Well, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the the finished video when you come back and you tell that whole story. That is going to be an awesome adventure. You're going to want to make sure you're subscribed to check that out. And what we'd like to know from you is, are you loading 375 H&H? Are you shooting 375 H&H? Tell us about what you're shooting, what load you've worked up, and what you're shooting it out of, what rifle you've got. Thank you, Guy, for putting this together. That was awesome. Thank you. i got to try shooting this thing. Okay. <laughs> I'm good with that. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.